So pretty cute. Man, you and him, um, yeah. Hershey's, fuck yeah. Kit Kat, yeah. Oh, oh uh, yeah, gummy bears. <laughs> Hello, future self, and welcome to those who got lost and stumbled upon this video. Today, I want to make a video to remind myself how to calculate zero and poles given any circuits, uh, C, L, C, I, L, C circuits. Those who are familiar with Laplace transform, you know it comes in front of you know, H equals S plus zero over S plus pole, blah, blah, blah. Something like this, that. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from, uh, this is what I have to deal with. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to go from one of these of M, like this one, for example, or a notch, like, this one for example turn that into a form of this and eventually turn that form into this first of all let's pick something to play with like for example shit i drew all over this it's kind of bad maybe a boost here yeah let's try that one this thing is an op amp with a pole and again at low frequency it's just this r over this r so simple as that let's draw it in a way that makes life easy. We have a uh, 65 ground. We have another R here called R60. Capacitor here, C69 plus C67. That's it. That's all we have to deal with. The Laplace transform of this, it's just a transfer function. Let's call this whole thing C2. Let's call this whole thing C1. A transfer function of this guy is just C2 over C1. Well, let's do C2 first. I'll just call this uh, sum of C. So C2 is you have a capacitor, you have a resistor, so your impedance is just 1 over S sum of C times uh, 60 divided by 1 over S C plus uh, 60. If you do a little bit of algebra, you will end up with uh, 60 S sum of C. That is our C2. Our C1 is just R65, so we're just gonna leave it as that. Now, let's rewrite this again. The transfer function is just C2 over C1 equals blah blah blah. Uh, 1 plus R60 is some C over R65. You would notice right away that there is no S up here. So you know that H of S is in the form of yeah, s plus zero one times s plus zero two times s plus zero blah blah divided by s plus pole one s plus pole two blah 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 and by doing this algebra here we are trying to get everything here into this form that we are familiar with and know what to do with it so let's continue here we have uh, 60 divided r uh, divided by R65 times, now we're gonna pull these guys out, uh, 60 sum C times S plus 1 over uh, 60 sum C. And that's it, that is your pole. And this is actually omega, which is already already in a form of two pi frequency. So in order to get frequency out of this, you would divide this term by two pi. And what's about the rest? R60 uh, cancel out. Let's write a little more neatly here in the final line. So your gain is one over uh, 65 times the sum of capacitor times 1 over s plus pole. That's it. This is your, uh, let's change thing. This is your gain. And this is your, actually this, this, this is your pole or omega. 
So I, I just use a CPK in MATLAB here. That, that doesn't matter. You can Google that yourself. But to know what the gain is, I'm just going to basically do the do a little math here. So 1 over R65, 499 ohms. Capacitor is 10 pico plus 2.2 nano. And voila, the gain is 9.06 e to the 5. And what about our pole? So remember that the pole is 1 over uh, sum of ohms capacitor. Uh, because it is already in a form of 2 pi f, we have to divide it by 2 pi. So it's 2 times pi times uh, r60. What was that again? 28k, whoops, 28e to the 3 times capacitor, uh, 10 pico plus 2.2 nano, and 2.5e to the 3, that is 2.5 kilohertz. The design was 2.3 kilohertz. I think that would be close. Sometimes people are limited by uh, capacitor and resistor they find in the lab, and there you go. Now, what does it look like on the plot? There we go, that's what it looks like. The gain at low frequency, as I said earlier, determined by these two resistors. Not sure you can see here, maybe you can see better here. These two resistors, because when the frequency is really, really low, you have one on really, really low number, which is infinity. So a capacitor is infinity. The current can't flow through here. So the current will just flow through these two, capacitor, uh, two resistors, and the gain at DC is defined by just R60, divided by R65. And here we have R60 of 28K over R65, which is uh, 499 ohms. And this is a way to sanity check whether or not your transfer function is right. I got a factor of 56. So a factor of, how much did we get? 56 is about 34.9 dB. So what do we have here? At DC, it's 35.7 dB. I'll call that close enough. Beautiful. And as your pole, your pole is defined by when your transfer function drop from DC by 3 dB. Here it is. This is our pole. This is about 2.3 kilohertz. So that's our transfer function. And how about a notch? You might wonder. I had trouble with that one myself. So let's go from... That was this boost. Let's go to one of these notches here, which is this one. It's still... Uh, yeah, it's still it's still an op amp. But what do we do with this inductor? What do we do with this capacitor? What do we do with these two resistors? It's just a clusterfuck, but not really. Bear with me here. You can see that this is actually a voltage divider. You have an R, you have another R, you have an L, and you have everything C because they're all in parallel. You just add them up just like that. That plus that plus that. So that's a variable capacitor. I'll just you know, give it somewhere in the mid range. But I forgot to tell you, I'd rather keep things in variable because it's easy to deal with algebra wise. So let's get to it. So a resistor, that's R96. Let's go to op and find whatever it is, is a voltage divider, pretty much. And boop, 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 boop. I will just write, I will just draw that as a big S capacitor. That will be C134 plus C135 plus C130. I'll just call it another sum of C. L1. Okay, we have everything. So, if you remember a voltage divider, just we out over V in equals R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And if you were to just have these two resistors, then your R2 is just R100 and your R1 is just R96. But we have this whole shebang here. So everything here is R or more correctly speaking, they're all Z. So you, what you need is actually C2. I'll just call this C2. How about that? And call this C1. C2 over C2 or C1 plus C2, C2 plus C1, doesn't matter. 
Now let's calculate Z2 because Z1 is just R96. Z2 is a little more complicated, but not that complicated. You have R, you have L, you have C, all in series. And the impedance is just R, S, L, and 1 over SC. Uh, there's a lot of algebra involved here unless you write a code to deal with this. Uh, but that's just how that's just the way it is. Um C2 is a hundred plus impedance in series you just add them like resistor just a reminder so you have a hundred plus is l1 plus one over is total c in the end you would have something c a hundred plus s square l1 sum of c plus one divided by is sum of c so that's your c2 c2 over c2 2 plus c1 becomes this term is sum of c uh, 100 plus s square l1 sum of c plus 1 divided by I'm just gonna skip a few steps here so the other one you would just have almost the same thing wait what the fuck is this I can't read my own handwriting 1 plus c1 here is uh, 96 times s sum of c and what do I do next what can I pull out here reminder that you still want this whole shebang to be in the form of s plus 0 over s plus pole now we have a quadratic equation and this is where I usually stop and go to MATLAB and have MATLAB solve it for me we can rewrite this in the form of a square plus uh, sorry, a square I mean s square plus stuff times s plus uh, s square plus stuff times s plus stuff without s so once you have this you can plug in the coefficient into the MATLAB function called roots so you throw in your coefficient up here so this is this times s squared, this times s, and plus 1. And that's all there is. Roots function will solve the quadratic for you. And in the end, you should get something in the form of 0 plus minus imaginary part and pole plus minus imaginary part. And you just plug that into a CPK and MATLAB. What's the notch looks like? Alright, and that's our notch at 0 dB at DC, 0 dB at high frequency, and the center frequency is right around 132. It's close enough to 130 kHz. And that's it. That's how you go from cluster fuck circuits to a Laplace transform to a plot or plots. There's a hell lot of algebra involved. This is how I spent my last, my past couple of weeks. Algebra, doing algebra, a whole lot of algebra. You can do it. And that's it. Good luck.